Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Saturday's chess show on IBM or Pod TV. My name is Sasha Starr, and uh, I would like to introduce uh, my esteemed guest. Uh, we'll start with uh, Grandmaster Alex Yermalinsky, three times US champion. Welcome to the show, Alex. Well, oh, hi, Sasha. Thank you for having me. Okay, and uh, we should have soon uh, Grandmaster Mikhail Marin and his lovely wife Maria, who is a very talented uh, uh, artist. Hopefully, uh, they will join us anytime soon. But uh, right. you know, we would like at least introduce the uh, subject of today's discussion. This is so-called Soviet Chess School. The first question is, is there is such an animal? If there is, then what exactly is it? Alex, you take first take on that. No, we, we talk in the past sense, of course, because the, the word <laughs> Soviet, no Soviet Union. assumes uh, events of 30 years ago or before that. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Well, I was there. Yeah, I can... Obviously, nobody can judge. Uh, no, nobody can know exactly uh, what's going on around them, even if they're in the midst of things. Uh, because, no, people are just uh, immersed in their personal lives and uh, problems and uh, joys and whatever. And uh, they can cannot see the whole picture, right? You cannot elevate yourself over the... Uh, over this whole situation and take a bird's eye view and then say, okay, this is it, this is that. We try to do it in our um, recollections. Absolutely. But uh, it, it still remains a personal kind of thing. Okay. Nobody okay. has the objective look at anything. Well, we cannot say, for example, that Solzhenitsyn had the absolutely objective look over, well, overlook of uh, uh, of the issue he wrote his uh, archipelago Gulag about or whatever it is. so it, it just nobody had it even him didn't have it. no amount of research and amount of personal involvement makes you the uh, the final authority of any subject I totally agree with you. Alex, let me introduce uh, uh, Grandmaster Mikhail Marin and his uh, lovely wife Maria. Welcome to the show. How are you today? Hello, Hello Sasha. Sasha. Hello, Alexander. Now, what is, what is that? What kind of wine is that? Uh, it's gra grape juice. Yeah? <laughs> would, you, would you believe me? Yeah, right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, that's a, that's a, that's a good one. Um, it's a wonderful Hungarian wine, actually. It's, um, I really love it because it's um, it smells like... Um, the flavor is uh, very special. Yeah, yes. it's, uh, it's wonderful. Wow. I mean, uh, if we are just between us, I mean, um, uh, people who know some Russian, I think that this uh, would explain what what it is in the glass. <laughs> Absolutely, and uh, the best. Well, yeah, yeah, that. Or, or like this. <laughs> but I, but I have a I, I have a question that no, well, it's little intrusive into your family life. Do you two drink from the same glass? Oh, uh, for instance, now yes. Okay, so, well, that no, that explains, yeah. yeah. No, so for, when, for, when is uh, your uh, birthday? Uh, I would like to uh, offer you a present, another glass, so you will have your own glasses then. No, we, we, we okay, happen to have two glasses uh, at home. Oh, you do the... have? I see. <laughs> we, we occasionally drink from different glasses, but uh, it's not unusual that we drink from the same glass. I mean, we are vaccinated, we are, we are boosted. So and the pandemic is uh, over uh, over in uh, about one week anyway. So um, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, so, ask, ask ask Canadian hackers if it's over or not. You will get yeah. different things from there. In Romania, it will be over in one week or two weeks, something like that. And and in many European countries. Yeah, I hope I hope so. It's really getting. Uh, no, they just uh, put an end to the, this uh, emergency. Just uh, like this. No, I mean, okay, it started like this, it ends like this, okay. Uh, but, you know, Mikhail, one practical thing about the drinking from the same glass, you have to do less dishes. You have only yes. washed one glass instead of and, two, right? And I, I am the dish machine. Uh, oh, you are the dish machine. <laughs> Bravo. I can do this because it's a, it's a, 
it's okay. It's not uh, not work for the um, for, for the woman. No. Mm -hmm. So I mean, okay. tell, tell me, uh, Alex is uh, obviously representative of uh, Soviet chess school. Oh uh, yeah, one way or another. You don't think so, Alex? A freaking torchbearer. Yeah, that's what I am. Uh, you are, of course. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, you you were one who who helped Kasparov become world champion. You beat him a couple of times when he was young, and uh, he learned his lessons from you. And then he no, that was me who learned the lesson. Yeah. Well, once and for all, I learned the lesson. I learned where I was in this uh, hierarchy, in this picking order of uh, of things. Because when I showed up for this game, I can tell you the whole story. If you talk about Please the last round game of the USSR Junior Championship in 1975 in Vilnius. So I was just, uh, I was 16 going on 17. That was my last uh, junior championship because they were under 18. But I knew that I would not be able to play next year because uh, they didn't really care for people who could not play in the main team event, which was in the summer. And I was right about this. They didn't send me next year. Although, of course, I was the, the best player. Uh, eligible in uh, Leningrad then. So, uh, just around before I had a very tense game with my friend, Mi well, Mikhail knows him, or knew him rather, Leonid Yurtaev. Yes, yes. No, very, he was, very, he was very, a great guy, you know, we were friends. Uh, but very, I, very original and dangerous player. Oh, yes. incredible. His ideas and always a fountain of ideas and uh, Obviously, certain character issues, you know, referring to gesture that you just uh, know. Mm -hmm. Okay, never yeah, mind. Yeah. So anyway, I'm losing this game, and uh, this is it. I'm uh, I'm too far behind, and I cannot uh, compete for medals anymore. And but it's Vilnius, right? Vilnius, no, the capital of then, no, Lithuanian Republic. Now, of course. All that, you know. So, I mean, it's almost like the West. Mm. So, me and a friend of mine, we go to a bar, then we disco, and then we we go hang out with some friends. We ended up, you know, with with uh, Alice McKenna's, the son of Ladas McKenna's. Mm -hmm. And we ended up s stealing some hard liquor from his dad, dad's bar, and he caught us. This is how much fun it was. Imagine, you know, drinking Vladis Mikinis's cognac at like five o'clock in the morning. So it was a great night, really fantastic. And uh, when we staggered to back to our hotel, it's already, well, morning. And, uh, well, the round was to start at 10 o'clock in the morning. Oh and, of course, then I meet the Soviet School of Chess in the person of Vladimir Zak. <laughs> who sits there, you know, why was this guy up at 7 o'clock in the morning? I have no idea. I had no idea back then. Now I do have an idea now because I'm now older than he was back then. But the fact is, and it gives us the eye, right? Okay, mm -hmm. all that, you know. So, no, well, then three hours later I show up for what I thought would be a meaningless game. And I end up playing this uh, wonder king from uh, Azerbaijan, who I knew, of course. Uh, I saw him before, and uh, and I sit down and play, and I wonder, what are the suits are doing? They're all these guys with suits. Hmm. They're standing all around him. I didn't know who these people were, and they give me these looks like worse than Zach gave me. And uh, I realize that these people, they want me to lose. And mind it, I'm not even 17 years old. And I'm thinking, why are these adults apparently very important people because they all wear suits, you know, and ties? Why do they hate me so much? What the, what the hell is going on? I mean, why is that? Okay, anyway, up and down, back and forth. Well, there are some lies about this, about Kasparov crying and whatever when he blundered uh, and 
run into his mother, you know, then nothing like that happened. The game was actually adjourned. He already blundered last. I blundered before. Game was adjourned, and uh, some two hours later, after the break, he showed up to play this useless uh, kind of resistance, and after another 15 moves of something, he resigned. But there was no drama, not on his part, not on my part. It's always all made up later on. What age uh, is he? But one last thing. When I returned to the hotel, I, I met Zach, one of those guys, right? But I knew him. I knew who he was. And uh, he said, how did you do? I said, I won. He said, would have been better for you if you lost. It would have been a good lesson for you. <laughs> no, well, I, uh, I mean, with ladies present, you know, I will not uh, repeat my reply to him. And <laughs> anyway, that was it. <laughs> so this is it, you know. And that at that moment, I wasn't even 17 years old. I got the picture once and for all, and it never changed for me. Where I was, where this Azerbaijani kid or whoever the hell he was, I didn't even know. And uh, and where these guys, the suits, where they were, uh, the picture became clear. There were nothing, nothing, nothing left to learn. This is it. But so that uh, was an introduction to Soviet yeah. chess school, right? <laughs> In a yeah. way. He's got Mikhail, of are, you, are you also a member of Soviet chess school or not, Mikhail? Well, uh, no, just one question. Is Kasparov younger than you? You are 17 and... Oh, he is five years younger. He was a uh, real, uh, real uh, prodigy. Uh, I, was, uh, I was already on the tail end of this. You know, I wasn't okay. a bad player in my youth. Mm -hmm. I was good enough to be in top 10, probably. But, mm -hmm. I mean, left. everybody was left to their own devices. With the exception of that kid, uh, somehow the suits were all over the place. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, uh, so, I don't know. Nobody was coaching you. Alex, time. but don't forget, I think Kasparov became protege and uh, Batvinik started to take care of him when he was only 10. Right? I suppose, you know, but what, what was Batvinik you know, to me? Well, oh, I, I should tell you about my interaction with Batvinik. That was one and only interaction in my life with Batvinik. That's a lot of fun. So, anyways, we played this Komsomolska Pravda, which they made... The, that newspaper, they made the special event so that simuls would be given by grandmasters to I remember. players and the, the captain of the of our team would give a simul to the members, to the kids of the of the other team. So the reason they did this thing because after they no, after they lost the world chess crown to Fisher, they kind of panicked, there was some there was an article by Kotov in the Pravda newspaper, and uh, there was some kind of reshuffling over there. And then, well, they did some things. They introduced some events. They tried to get those guys, drag them down from their cloud nine, and make them somehow involved in a day-to-day -day chess. I'm talking about all these former world champions, the, um, the fat cats. Anyways, and they did show up, give them credit. And uh, so that day I played Tal. Fine, I'm playing Tal. And I'm white, and we have some kind of English over there. There was six, six boards, Simon. With the clocks? Yes, of course. And by the time we reached the, as we reached the move 45, the games are stopped and adjudicated. There is no sudden death. Adjudication. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah, it was interesting. We, we repeated this line, uh, which uh, Fisher used to beat um, Petrosian in the century match mm -hmm. on the black side of the symmetrical English, where Petrosian went like knight of three and d3, but Fisher went e6 and knight e7, and followed by d5. Mikhail knows what I'm talking yes, about. Yes, yes, yes. So, I repeat this game, but I made some improvement for White. And I think I had a little bit of pressure, but no, well, I misplayed it. And then, at, probably at around move 30, I went into the escape mode. And I I was, what, 14 years old at that time. But somehow I played this game real well. And I was able to trade down to some rook game. And then we reached move 45. 
So I'm like, Phew. ah, move 45. And Tao is there, and I think it's a draw. I thought he would offer me a draw. But he just stands there. In comes Batwinik, because if the, the Grandmaster does not no, agree on the result, then it's up to the chief arbiter of the tournament, Who was Batwinik, is right? Batwinik himself, to show up and pass his judgment. So Batwinik throws in, looks at the position, and tells me one word, score shit. So I give him my score shit. No, he was what at that time? 60, 61. To me, he looked like an ancient creature, dinosaur, of course. But I got to give it to him. His, his mind was still there. In about 10 seconds, he goes over the game, right, in his head. And throws the score shit back to me and with the look of utmost disgust on his face. So I grab the score shit and I see it. Then he says, well, Misha, we both know that if the game went on, you would have won. But at this position, well, I still cannot give Black a win, so this is a draw. Tal says whatever, and he already digs out a cigarette from <laughs> because <laughs> he needs to go have a smoke. And I'm like, okay, I, I mean, I, I was too shocked, you know, to even understand what was happening. But I mean, this is how it is. You know, this is how it always was. And it's not my individual story. I mean, there are many stories like this of many people. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is it. That's your Soviet school of chess. Yeah, Mikhail, I wanted to ask you, uh, do you feel uh, being a part of Soviet chess school or being uh, in Romania, it was something different? Well, if we agree with the fact that the Soviet chess school existed, uh, okay, many, most of the people say that there was an Armenian chess school, uh, Leningrad chess school, um, okay, whatever, Ukrainian chess school. But if, if we agree that uh, such a thing existed as the Soviet chess school, of course, um, I'm, um, let's say, 10% uh, self-made and 90%. Uh, uh, no, I should also give some credit to my father. Not only because he passed away uh, recently at the age of 96. Very sorry. Uh, but let's say uh, most part of uh, my chess is a product of the uh, Soviet chess school. Okay, keeping the difference of level, the level difference, uh, in the same way as uh, Fisher was. I mean, I was uh, I was receiving uh, my, my father made a subscription to four Soviet chess magazines. And uh, actually, I owe everything to this because I learned the Russian with the dictionary, you know, and this helped me a oh, few dozens of years later when I met Maria. And uh, actually, I was mastering the read, the reading, uh, you know. Oh, uh, my, uh, but in my in my mind, uh, there was some weird language that was uh, going on. I mean, not much of a connection with the spoken Russian. So, uh, well, when I met, we met Maria, okay, this started to be our language, and it is our main language uh, up to today. Even though her Romanian is excellent and her English is reasonable, and she makes uh, progresses with Italian and uh, Spanish. Mm, uh, bravo, but, uh, bravo, Maria. Bravo. Uh, I mean, <laughs> now, you know, um, if I can say a few words seen from, from outside, no? Um, no, of course, uh, I, I, I was you know, just believing in everything I saw. I mean, annotated games or, or games without annotations, for instance, in Shakhmat de Bulletin. It was, it was like some sort of modern tweak. Mm -hmm. uh, it had between 180 and 200 games every month. And I was playing them over again and again, all, all of them, you know. And of course, uh, I developed this uh, way of thinking and respect. Uh, this is why after 1990, uh, no, before 1990, I uh, my results against uh, Soviet players were uh, not so good, even though it was nothing wrong with my chest. For instance, I I failed to to share the win in the Budapest Festival in '88 because in the last round I lost to to Dohoyan with White, in a position where I had a big advantage. But I was convinced that he was outplaying me, and nothing like that. I was clearly better. 
so um, uh, so I lost eventually. Um, but okay, seen from outside, okay, what does the Soviet uh, chess school mean? I also have some some information from Maria. Well, first of all, okay, there was interest for chess. There was this. Um, I mean, okay, there was. A, it started with uh, the twenties, the early twenties. I, I read some uh, some articles, books. It was typical that okay, everybody was poor and okay, not. The bad situation after the first war and the revolution. So you can could still see on 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 Sunday or Saturday you could still see people with with a chess set under the uh, uh, their arm going to the club because there was going to be some tournament and and there was something like you know uh, chess was really something and okay Russian and Soviet space it was generally very intellectual so uh, somehow it was also something that suited them well. Uh, it's also their ambition, somehow their uh, optimism, which, for instance, is typical for Karpov. Uh, I mean, okay, you, you, his position would be as bad as it was, but he would just analyze and try to to prove that he's better. So, um, no, there are several. Of course, all these things um, are uh, no. You cannot generalize, but it, it's how I uh, perceived it. Uh, and of course, okay, there was a system. I mean. Um, not everybody was uh, allowed abroad, even though in the Khrushchev time, Podvinik wrote a, a paper that uh, Soviet people should, the pairs should be allowed to travel uh, in the Occident, to the Occident to win, to earn uh, dollars and okay, whatever. And he was uh, almost kicked out of the party because of uh, this, uh, this article. So, um, okay, there were maybe 10 players, maybe at the time, who would tra travel everywhere. But the others, okay, they could play somewhere in, I don't know, uh, some <laughs> quarterfinals or half or uh, semifinals of the Soviet uh, championship for two months. Yeah, but the it. life was great, Mikhail. That was great life. Yeah, yeah, it was yes, much yes. better, you know, like we, I mean, why, why, why did I become chess player? For the lifestyle. We yes, would yes. go to these long yes. tournaments, we would travel to this far corners of the Soviet Union. It's a no, and it's beautiful places by yeah. color or whatever. I mean, yeah, yeah, of course, we will hang out, you know, we would stay in the, we'll still stay in the best hotel in some small town, go to a best restaurant, meet with best people, by the way, too. I mean, that was yeah, great. It would certainly be the drab existence of going to work nine to five. No, no, of course, so there, there, it made sense to play chess, but not yeah. not all of, of the players were like, I don't say Kasparov, I so Petrosian, like like you. Not all, all the players were at this level. So uh, those who are candidates of masters, of masters, they would uh, just uh, have to be trainers or to analyze, to write books, to, to prepare materials for the pioneers' uh, palace or whatever. And this this was a system. I mean, there are no, but that... no, no real chess players ever did any coaching work. It was all left to people who didn't play in tournaments. Uh, yes, yes. Because, even uh, even players of my level, they never they never coached anybody. It's just yes, different but, now. Yeah. But but not everybody had your level. They're, I mean, okay. No, you know, there maybe... are quite a few of guys like me. If I was, I don't know, maybe top fifth, number fifty or number sixty in that country. Yeah. Yeah, but okay. What what? Yeah, I understand. Number, yeah. number five hundred. Yeah, but no. don't forget, yeah. don't forget the very important uh, feature of Soviet chess school is that there were almost every palace of pioneers every school had chess instructors so people oh, even if i'm sorry i'm interrupting i yeah. never knew i never knew any school i grew up in leningrad you know that's a city of three and a half million people it was no schools had chess instruction nothing well i was graduated in odessa a music uh, special uh, school mm -hmm. and there was a chess instructor in our school and uh, he was uh, coming once a week in our class and we would play you know just uh, simple games and then he would uh, show something but you know interesting thing is that i was just i don't know i was maybe uh, 12 years old or so and i was very curious and i asked him okay let's play a game we played a game and I demolished him. Apparently, he, he was not a good player. He was, uh, he was, he was from, from an older class and he was assigned 
a duty to be a chess instructor, but he was not. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of a job, kind of a chess instructor. Of course, uh, but in Odessa, a course of pioneers, they were very solid chess instructors. No, they, that's true. Uh, you know, Otterman, course, uh, Efim, Gell, Efim um, Kogan, uh, well, Efim Geller, he was not chess instructor. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Uh -huh. He was much bigger than that, but uh, you know. No, what? I I agree with you. Yeah, there were there certainly were plenty of opportunities to learn the game and compete with others. And don't forget this uh, the system where you have always compete to get to city's semifinal and from there to city's final, then to oblast uh, or um, how you say dist yeah. district. Semi-final, district final, then uh, <laughs> Soviet Union semi-final, quarter-final, semi-final, and then final. So, so the tournaments after tournaments, and it was so important because if you didn't make it to a next level, you're out for one year. There's no, nothing for you to do. You're no, well, that's why the good ones like myself, they would go all the way. We yeah. played year, year round, we played in those qualification tournaments. Absolutely. And the life was great, as I said. Somebody was. You playing. remember, you remember uh, who's a famous, uh, uh, he was a chess master, very, very good player, but not grandmaster. He was a master. But he was always making to, to USSR semifinals. Uh, and uh, he was saying, Moi final, polu final. That's basically his final. It was exam. probably before my time. Yeah, I can see it. Anyway, yeah. no, it's Guys, great. I would propose to uh, Yeah. I would propose one thing. We will make a very short break, actually two minutes. Let's get out of this link and activate Russian link. And we will continue this program in Russian with the Grandmaster uh, Sergei Makarichev and his wife Marina. So maybe they have something to say about Soviet Union. So, well, I'm sorry. Well, are, are you guys going to be there or you're going to be gone? What? Mikhail. Yes, yes, yes. No, Mikhail and Maria, they can, they can uh, talk in Russian. No, I understand, but I don't want them to go. You know. No, 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 no. Oh, okay, great. Okay, so let's switch to so, another link. Yes. So okay, yes. thank you so much. We will end our program for in English and let's soon start one in Russian. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.